Instrument. Sometimes it's a style. Sometimes you just hear a big thing in your head and go, "Okay, now I have to decipher it." What instruments are playing that? That's sure yeah. on the radio in my head. Okay. Yeah. How much of what you do is some is really on the fly and not really what you know? Because that's what I do. I mean, she'll tell me something that she wants. And I just like that. The same thing with I they, I uh, on a TV show I did once. They said, "Okay, give me this." And I said, okay. Yeah. yeah, go. Yeah, that was it. I think a lot of it, for me, a lot, I'm a big believer in improv. I'll, yes. I'll just sit and while I'm watching the scene, I'll play around on my keyboards. I have a keyboard set up that has any sound I can yeah. want. So a lot of it's improv because I'm reacting to it like an audience would react. Um, and I like to try to keep the audience feel because if, I mean I'm a huge movie fan and TV fan so if I'm feeling it yeah the millions that are watching are thinking the same thing so I improv a lot um, it's really helpful on TV because TV moves so fast I have like a week to do an episode whereas in a film you only have six months so in the films I've done it'll start as improv but then you start thinking about it maybe too much and yeah. so I, I like to just be in the moment and do it sometimes I'll come up with something you know like in the car or in the shower and, but it's a lot of like you said just be in the moment and run with it how often do you find yourself doing something that you really like and all of a sudden oh god somebody wrote that before oh I've done that many times yeah many I worked for half a day one day until I realized I don't remember if it was me that I realized or my assistant said hey that's you can't use that but, sounds too close yeah, yeah but I've done I've done that and used other people's and I've done that and used my own yeah. you know like I'm literally <laughs> yeah. writing something for this show that I used on this show so it's a bit schizophrenic I know. I mean, I got you have to surround yourself with some people that aren't afraid to tell you you can't do that right don't do it <laughs> what's the most unique instrument you've ever used the most unique I bought I bought a, a piano specific. Uh, I went on Craigslist and bought a piano, an old old piano. I wanted to find the oldest, just crappiest piano I could find. And I bought it from this woman's garage, and then I took it apart and put tacks and pins and everything in it just to make it sound funky. And that was, and it had this really cool sound that the director liked, and he couldn't really tell if it was a piano or. And that was, it wasn't really, it was just a piano, so it wasn't that unique an instrument, but we made it unique by tearing it apart. Um, but I think the most unique was, we bought a, I wanted to use a music box, and we went and found this music box supplier. And the music box supplier kept saying, well, don't you care what song it plays? I'm like, no, I just want, I don't care what it plays, I'm going to play it myself. And they couldn't get their head around, like, why would you not care what song it plays? So we took it home and took it apart and just played it. And you have to play it with, like, pins, needles. Okay, and so you've talked a little bit about the process for creating this, but what is it like once you've submitted the score? Do you get feedback from the director in terms of like, whether it's what they're, they were envisioning in the movie? Or like, like, I guess, give you notes back or anything? Yeah, you'll get, I'll generally have a whole session where I play them everything, and then they'll, cue by cue, um, as we call them, cues say, well, this is working, I like this, but what if this was more emotional, or you're too emotional, or I don't want to be angry, I don't want to be scary, and they'll, it's a collaborative effort, and the whole thing, the film is collaborative, so, um, I like that process, because I work in a dark room in a bubble, and I could do whatever I want, right? and then they'll pull you back and go, great, but not exactly what we need, a little bit too emotional, and you go, okay, so you'll just you'll go through a certain round of revisions and on a film that can take months and on TV like I said we have a week or two weeks so can you give me your notes really quickly change it sometimes you get it right and sometimes uh, they have they have things called temp tracks which are the music they've put in temporarily for the scene to give you an idea it's usually from another movie or another TV show and it gives you an idea of the of the scope of the scene. So sometimes you can follow that and gauge 
the emotion or the size. Um, and there's some times where they give you nothing, they just say, do what you think. We really don't know what to do with this thing. But it's definitely clever. What instruments do you equate most with superheroes? I think orchestra, for me, even though it might be a bit old-fashioned, old just because of the size and, and the power and the emotion behind it, and then definitely percussion. Big drums and big, just big, everything really. It's hard to, it's hard to score a superhero with a piano, but we are doing it in the arrow a lot. Because he's, He's, he's a sad superhero. Yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has some emotional depth. So, in previous interviews with other composers, we've always been told if at the end of listening to the show, if you didn't really notice that the music was in there, then we did a good job. It didn't work. Yeah. And if you didn't notice it and you can still hum it when you leave, we did a great job. <laughs> Do you prefer the pressure of a real short time schedule versus having a long time to work on a project? I actually, it, it depends on the project. I would, I would really like more time in TV. I would like if we had two weeks, yeah. even. Um, it's good because it, it makes you just. Even if I get up and I'm like, I don't feel like writing emotional music today, yeah. you're forced to do it and it sort of makes you call the muse to you. But sometimes I, I mean, I'll have things that I don't really think were great. I know they work, but I kind of, the time ran out, so I have to turn it in. So in that sense, I've always loved more time. Yeah. But sometimes more time is just makes people not like things, or get tired of them, or you rethink something that instinctually might have worked better. So, it goes both ways. Double-edged swords, basically. Do you, oh, do you prepare differently in writing for TV versus movies? Not really. Not really. It's, it's um, I think with writing TV, if I prepare early on, I'll prepare all of my um, templates and palettes and so I can write quickly and don't explore so much, but um, it's still, you're reacting to what the story is and having to enhance it. It's not really a different process. Um, the classic that that is from, when was that, from the 80s, I think, Christopher Lear's um, And I love, even though it's only two notes, I love Hans Zimmer's Dark Knight theme. It works. It works. It's a theme. Have you ever, like... And Avengers, the new Avengers theme is fantastic. And I got to conduct it this summer in Spain with an orchestra. It's just such a great theme. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody else's work and thought, I could have done that better than you did? Uh, no. I think you. I think you think I would have loved to have done that project. Yeah. But I. I think it's. It's hard because there's so many things behind why they did it. Why they, that way? You might hear something out that doesn't really work. But there's such a line of between the composer and the finished product of so many people telling them change this, change that. So sometimes I'll think I know he's I'll think different I'll think I know he's better than that. I'll know he's capable better than that. So I'll think what caused him to do that. Or her, but I'm sure yeah. there aren't very many. Yeah. 